Hey guys, Jace Do Productions here. Okay, so this is exactly what it says. This is a basic transition tutorial. Um, not just how to do it, but kind of which ones I feel you should use and which ones I feel you shouldn't. Um, anyways, to start this off, you're using Final Cut. Some of you might be using Final Cut Pro 7, some might be using Final Cut Express. Either way, it's Final Cut. It's, it's professional editing software, uh, and it should be treated that way. You know, there's been five Hollywood movies that have been nominated for Academy Awards for Best Editing that have been edited in Final Cut. You know, this software that you're looking at right here was used to edit movies that won Academy Awards. It's true. In 2010, The Social Network won the Academy Award for Best Editing, and it was edited in Final Cut Pro. And the very, the very next year, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was, was nominated and won Best Editing. I did it all in Final Cut. So this is not Windows Movie Maker. This is not iMovie. And that's the first step of this tutorial is it should not be treated that way. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to our Effects tab and into Video Transitions. Now, you have all these folders here. We have wipes. We have slides, page peels. We have irises. Uh, we have 3D simulation. They all sound really cool, but they're not. Don't use them. Don't use them unless you're editing your great Aunt Millie's 60th birthday party celebration or something. You know, if you're using this for anything even somewhat professional, stay away from those. The only one that you really need to worry about is Dissolve. Okay? And even in here, the only ones that you really need to look at are the Cross Dissolve the fade in fade out dissolve and the dip to color dissolve those are the only three that I ever use and <laughs> I feel it's the only three that you should use too if you want to be taken seriously I feel um, okay so let's just jump right into it to, to add a transition to your clip you have clip A and clip B and you find the one that you want click on it and drag it in there let it in there you go and you got your cross dissolve, it will look something like this. There you go. Pretty simple. Now, one thing you can do, I'm going to stretch the timeline out here to give you a better look at this. You can adjust the length of the transition simply by putting your cursor over it, clicking and dragging out to make it a longer transition, or in to make it a shorter transition, however you'd like it to be. I think you can go up to like 13 seconds of a transition. And I'm guessing you all know what cross dissolves are, like I just showed you. Now the fade in, fade out is similar, but it just fades to black. Those are the two most standard transitions used. And then there's the dip to color. Now this will dip to a color of your choice. If you double click on this transition, up here you will see an eyedropper tool and you will see a color palette and you can pick whatever color you want what I like to do is I like to try to find a color that is in the in the actual video so I will use the eyedropper tool and I will find maybe this white right here which is a little bit of an off-white it's not quite as bright as as real white because the color that it dips to is a color that is in your video feels a little bit more natural it's not this necessarily this bright harsh white you might not see it on your screen but it's just enough to make it feel kind of like it should be there um, now the fourth transition that I'm going to show you is is not a transition that you can just drag and drop this is one that you, that you actually have to create um, but because you can create it you have a lot of freedom to do a lot of different things that standard transition might not give you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this cross dissolve and I'm going to stretch these out and we are going to use color correction okay now that is in video filters color correction and color corrector I am going to add a color corrector to this clip and I'm going to add it to this clip I'm going to double click on the first one to bring it up into the viewer go up to the color corrector tab and I'm gonna find a spot this is your video right here this is your clip 
I'm going to find a spot right about maybe two-thirds of the way through. And I'm going to click this button here. This is going to set a keyframe. Okay, so from the start of this little blue diamond shaped to the very end of the clip, it is going to go from the color that you see here to whatever I want to set it to. So I'm going to take the whites and I'm going to blow the whites up. I'm going to take the mids and I'm going to blow the mids up too, and the blacks. So to the point of where it is completely white. So that is done. Now I'm going to click on the second one. And I'm going to do the same thing but in, in the opposite order. I'm going to set a keyframe at the very beginning of this clip and I'm going to blow up all the color. And then I'm going to go ahead uh, about a third of the way through. I'm going to set one more keyframe and I'm going to set everything back to its original color. There you go. And what this will look like you, there, there, so there's not actually a transition. It's just color correction with keyframes. And what this will look like is something very, very similar to the dip to color, but it's going to look a lot more natural. It's going to look a lot more organic, um, and you, you'll you'll just kind of notice. I mean, it's it's light years better than the dip to color, in my opinion. It takes a little bit more time, obviously, but you have a lot more control over the, the tones and, and the light and where it necessarily comes from. Um, but that's pretty simple. I have a tutorial on keyframing. Um, there's a, just an infinite number of things you can do with keyframing once you kind of learn how to do it. You know, it's kind of like snowboarding. You, you don't have a clue what you're doing, and then one day you just you figure it out, and it just all makes sense. And then, like, you know, the mountain is yours so to speak. but Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about, and this is important, is handles. Okay, Now, to use a cross dissolve properly, you have to have handles on your video. If you don't know what that is, bear with me. I'm going to do my best to explain it to you. I'm going to double click on this clip and bring it up in the viewer. Click on the video tab. Now, the entire clip I'm not using the entire clip. I'm only using this section right here in the middle. Okay. Now this gray area that I'm not using on this side and this gray area that I'm not using on this side is a handle. And you have to have you have to have handles on each side of your clip. Probably about a second of of handle on each side. This one has a handle on both sides as well. You need that because if you put a transition down here, if you put a cross dissolve for example, what it's doing is it's taking this clip which if you notice this clip starts right here. Here's where it starts. But if you add a, trans, a cross dissolve transition to it, now that clip technically starts here because this is when it starts dissolving, slow but sure. Yeah, this is all blown out. But so you need to have you need to have extra video. You need to have that handle on there. You need to have this. If if we were to put video clips in here that didn't have handles, okay? I'm gonna delete this. We're gonna go over here and I'm gonna drop this clip in. And we're gonna drop this clip in. The, it's the, the whole clip, the whole thing. If you notice, no handles. And on this one as well, no handles. So there's nothing for the transition to grab when it switches over. So if I go up and I want to put a, put a little transition in there, I'm going to put a cross dissolve. It won't, it won't, even, it won't even let me. You know, If I want to use the shortcut I want to use the cross dissolve shortcut. Click on the section that I want, hit Apple or Command, Apple T. There is insufficient media for the requested transition. Would you like to accept the others? So you can't do it. You need to have the handles. Anyways, I think that's about it. And 
you know, it's it's a pretty simple tutorial, you know, but it's a uh, it's good to know. The the thing is 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 if you're if you're doing a project and let's say you have let's say you're doing a music video and you've got 20 clips in there, don't put a transition in every single one of those cuts. Don't use 20 transitions. You know, you you learn as you go along, but there's definitely a right time and a wrong time to use one. It really has to do with the content that you're editing, the uh, the pacing that you created, and just sort of just, just the the mood that it that it's set in at that time. A, uh, a, a a transition is kind of a very graceful move, and you don't always want grace in every single one of your cuts. So um, try to be aware of that, and and don't put a bunch of transitions in there. It's just gonna make your your project look repetitive and um, boring and cheap really so um, do yourself a favor learn when to use them and when not anyways uh, all right guys um, thanks for watching if you have any questions please feel free to to send me a comment or, or a, a message I, I do a really good job at getting back with just about everybody that has any questions I, I love to help so um, uh, all right guys see you later